Hey YouTube, what's going on? Mason here again on part two of our installment of the Texas Speed Cam and this Boss Haas bike behind me with uh, LS3. The first thing I want to do is go over some of the unboxing of some of our parts here uh, that we're going to be using on the bike. Um, first thing we'll start off with is we ordered everything from Texas Speed. Um, they do a really good job putting everything together in a one complete good kit. Uh, this is kind of separate part of the kit though. It is the um, trunning upgrade for the stock rocker arms for the LS. Um, and the main reason for that, and I'll show in this part of the video when I go through to actually replace them, is uh, the factory bearings aren't sealed. And these actually have sealed needle bearings inside of them. So there's no way for these needle bearings to ever back out and try to end up in your oil pan. So the new rocker shafts, the bearings, uh, the snap rings that retain everything, these washers that they use to uh, help you install all of them when you push them together, and of course new grade 10.9 hardware. Um, second, we've also got the, the valve spring kit here. Uh, this is their 660 lift polished valve, dual valve spring kit. Um, this one has the titanium retainers. You can get them with tool steel or um, I believe just regular steel, stainless or whatever retainers, but this is the titanium set. I mean, it seems silly, but to shave a few grams here and there, it's rotating mass in the valve chain, especially when we rub this in as high as we are. Um, you know, any any bit of mass you can save helps, and they also give you brand new valve stem seals. And these are the spring seat valve stem seal all in one combo unit. So. Another really good product from Texas Speed. Uh, we've also got the camshaft here. Um, I've already kind of opened this up. We have the cam card down here. Again, this is their Stage 4 LS3 cam. Uh, the grind number is 25 TSP 235248 111 3B. And the 111 is a 111 lobe separation. The 3B, of course, is 3 bolt. Um, that was one of the things we wanted to delete in this is go to the three bolt cam instead of the single bolt because it's uh, it's a lot safer design. You don't have just the doll on the end of the cam retaining your cam gear from spinning. So as you can see, we've got a 235, 248 duration split at 50 thousandths, um, 649, 615 valve lift on the 1.7 stock rockers on a 111 lobe separation angle so it is definitely a healthy cam um, especially something still you know using the factory rockers and factory lifters um, but it's a very good unit like i said i've used it in one other vehicle before so we're going to see what it sounds like in the bike and then also as part of the cam kit we have the push rods here um, these are the Stock length, 7.400 inch, um, and you can see right there, it says uh, 80,000 12 thickness. Just Texas Speed Standard hardened push rods. Um, again, use these in a dozen vehicles so far. Never had one fail. As part of the three bolt upgrade kit, we have the factory GM cam gear. Um, you can see the four rays, it's upside down, obviously right now, but it, has the four raised points for your 4X cam reluctor for the Gen 4 engines, such as this LS3, and the three bolt holes in it to work with the three bolt cam. And again, that's so you don't have to have one the cam doll that goes in that hole. Uh, you don't rely on that just to keep your cam gear in place. So next we have a new harmonic balancer bolt. Uh, these are a torque yield bolt like many other bolts in the LS. Um, I know a lot of people don't reuse them. Um, some people do. Uh, I have reused them before. I've never had an issue. But when you're installing a cam kit such as this, and it's not much more money to just get it all together as one. And that does also include your new front seal, two water pump gaskets, and the timing cover gasket itself. Um, they don't give you RTV, um, unlike small block. Chevy there's not a whole bunch of RTV in these but the bottom corners are going to need RTV and I'll address that when we go to put the pan back on or the timing cover back on where it meets the pan 
And then finally our ARP bolts with the fastener assembly lube uh, that goes with them to hold the cam gear in place. And there's a shirt here. I wish when you spent a thousand dollars from Texas Speed they would just give you a shirt, but they don't. Um, it's definitely worth the 12 or 15 bucks, whatever, because these are really nice soft shirts. So add a couple to your collection if you're going to do this. And last but not least, we have our new computer there. Um, this came off from a company on eBay out of Long Island. And I probably ought to look them up before the end of this so I can give them some credit. Uh, it's already pre-programmed. Uh, the tune in this and the VIN number was from a 2007 Trailblazer SS why it's using that uh, when it's in fact an LS3 I don't really know but uh, that's the VIN number that we gave them to you know put the initial tune in it and uh, so we'll go through some of that stuff with HP tuners with changing the tune file in that and copying over another tune that I had to into this one to get this thing fired up Okay, for the next step, we're going to get the cam covered in assembly lube. Uh, super important, especially if it's going to be a little while before you start it. We are going to hopefully start this one tonight, but just the same, it's good to have your lifters protected. Um, so I picked up some of this Lucas Oil assembly lube. Use this a bunch. Uh, just get it at your local AutoZone or whatever parts store, and it's uh, pretty easy to apply. Um, also, I am not a big fan of using gloves. My hands start to sweat and feel gross, but... Uh, Assembly lube is one of those things I definitely use gloves for because it is sticky and makes a mess and is a real pain in the ass to get off your hands, especially if you have other plans later. Okay, so now we got this thing good and lubed up. Uh, just take both hands and twist around on it once you got a bunch of assembly lube on it to evenly coat everything up. And we'll go and start inserting it into the engine. You want to be as careful as you can, obviously, for the sake of your cam bearings, which I'm sure if you're doing this in a fairly used LS, they're going to be bad anyways, but remember, everybody says cam bearings aren't bad unless you look at them, so don't pay too close attention to them. Um, this one so far is going in really good, which is sometimes a little bit of a surprise. You start getting into these real high lobe. I lift cams with big lobes on them. They can be sometimes a little bit of a pain to get into place, but this one's going pretty good so far. Uh, the last little bit here, um, I'm gonna take my glove off, grab a screwdriver, and uh, use that to help gain a little bit of leverage for the cam. All right, now we got our enormous Craftsman flathead screwdriver here. Just insert that in the cam and use that to help lift and kind of twist at the same time and we're good we are in place take that out now we can take our dowels out remember our dowels from the first video are used to help retain our lifters because you don't want your lifters falling out and ending up in your oil pan so now that those are out of place we'll go ahead and rotate this guy over um, it is quite tight again because this is a new LS3. The cam bearings aren't wore out garbage like most LS's and the assembly lube is very sticky. But uh, everything looks like it's rotating over nicely. We'll go ahead and pull all the push rods out of here and uh, get ready to install our new ones. So now we're going to go through and install these Texas Speed push rods. The new ones in here. Uh, these are Again, the 516 standard push rod that they include with most of their kits. And I like to go through and push these lifters down the last little bit now before you go to put the rocker arms in. Because remember, those are held up from your lifter trays. Um, real quick, too, before I put this last one in, I can show you here a comparison between a stock push rod and one of the Texas Speed ones. Stock one here on your left, you can see it has the uh, kind of old school ball design on the end of it. Um, you know, these are cheap and easy to make because that ball is welded on. Whereas the Texas Speed one, it is a single forged design where it's kind of all one piece. There's no ball to collapse on the end of it. Um, camera's not really focusing that well here, but. Yep, still has the hole down the center for your oiling. 
Just a nice good little unit. So the next part here is the cam retainer plate and as you can see by this broken area down here we ran into a little bit of a snag. Um, we had to torque these bolts down and we ended up uh, actually you can see where it has a crack there and then uh, there's also looks like a couple other cracks starting in other spots here. Um, not sure what caused this. Um, if anybody knows or has seen an issue like this before, comment below. Uh, I have never seen a cam retaining plate split like that. But fortunately, since we have so many other LS's here, uh, we have one of the older style cam retainer plates here that do not take the countersink screws. And they're matching hardware. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed and uh, start getting the cam sprocket on and get it timed. So now we got our timing marks lined up. Very difficult to see. You can see the dot on the cam gear and the dot on the crank gear are lined up. So we're going to go ahead because we are reusing the tensioner on here. I'm going to pull the drill bit out of here that I've put in and that releases the tensioner. And then the uh, chain feels good and tight. So go on to the next step of reinstalling the timing cover. Um, we've got the ARP bolts, torque 25 foot pounds with their assembly lube on there. And uh, yep, we'll go ahead and reinstall the timing cover, put our RTV down in the corners here, and we'll be good to go. So now we're just going to put a little dab of RTV right in the corners down here. And uh, that'll help seal everything up for our gap between our oil pan and our timing cover. That might be a little bit too much over there. And then we'll set our gasket on here the correct way, which is not that way, it's this way. And then uh, we'll get a couple bolts started in it and get that up into place. So now I've got all the hardware in the timing cover um, all the way around. Don't forget your alternator bracket that goes onto the timing cover. Nothing is tight yet though. Um, unlike a small block Chevy, these don't actually have a dowel that retains them at all. So the plate can actually move around just slightly. It does center really well right in the gasket itself uh, because of the way the O-rings actually protrude into the, the holes for the hardware. Um, but as something I like to do just to help center it is actually install the balancer before tightening the timing cover all the way to the spec. Um, that way it just helps center up in the seal at all so you don't end up with some leaks coming out of the front of your crank. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the balancer and then uh, get the timing cover tightened up and we'll go from there. And now that our balancer's on with our brand new bolt installed, we can go ahead and, go ahead and snug up our cover. So now we get our 8mm headed bolts tight that are actually part of the alternator bracket here. And then we're going to go ahead and reinstall the horn, which we do actually have a new one of these coming because the chrome is starting to flake off this one. But uh, just go ahead and plug it into the positive spade here. And then uh, when it goes on, we just have to make sure our ground wire is actually underneath our bolt head. like so and then tighten it down to the block so now we've got the water pump retightened down on its slotted holes um, this is rubber mounted but it that's retightened as well as the whole um, engine water pump I don't know what normally would be a water pump on a LS in a vehicle. Um, still uses the regular standard LS gaskets, so everything's retightened there. Um, we had to retape the ends of the braided hose where it was actually starting to fray a little bit and come apart. So we got that taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead and get the belt reinstalled. Um, we're going to tighten our tensioner up using our 530 seconds Allen wrench here up on an impact, and that's going to draw the pulley up. And that 
feels kind of adequate. It's a little bit loose right now, but uh, once we tighten the pulley up, I think it's going to actually tighten itself up the rest of the way. So now we're going to do the throttle body. Um, we've got the hardware here right on the throttle blade. Remember, we only have three of them because the other matching uh, spacer is still on the intake up there. So we're going to kind of weasel the throttle body in at an angle like it was, if I remember how it goes. It goes up underneath that bracket up there and then I'll get the bolt started in this corner and this corner and then finally put our other clamp on this side. Okay, so now our whole throttle body assembly is on uh, as well as the boot and the mass airflow that's here. So now we're gonna grab the radiator and get that slid in. Uh, this has to kind of slide sideways across the bike at the same time you avoid this bracket and it has to sit into these grooves. So this is a little bit of a pain. It's definitely easier with a second set of hands. So put the camera down, we'll get that slid back together and get some cooling in it and double check our lines. Okay, the radiator is now reinstalled. Uh, when you do this, make sure you do not forget to hook up your coolant bypass port or steam port, whatever you want you like to call it. Um, that's there to make sure any steam or air pockets in the coolant are properly cycled out um, because that is the highest point in the coolant system. There's no crossover at the front of the block like on a small block Chevy or front and rear of the heads, whatever. Um, coolant hoses are resecured. Also, don't forget about your your uh, transmission cooler lines down here on the bottom and as well as the electric fan wiring which your ground is right here on the side of the head and this single plug up here by your spark plug wires is the power to the fan. Okay so now that the radiator is back in and it is full of coolant for now at least until we can power everything up um, and actually spin the water pump. I'm gonna wait on that until we have the computer installed. Uh, the last thing I wanna do is try to power things up without the computer installed. Um, so we're going to move on to doing the valve springs. Um, so for that, I have this tool. Uh, so what we have is actually the bottom half of a compression test gauge. And then the top half here is an eighth inch NPT adapter to eighth to quarter. And then our air hose fitting on this side. And then down here underneath the um, the correct spark plug thread adapter um, there's a Schrader valve in these kind of like a bicycle tire or whatever we have to remove the Schrader valve because there's no we have to make sure we can put air in it essentially the wrong direction um, so we have to make sure to take that valve out so if your compression test gauge doesn't let you do that you're gonna have to find one that does uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to we've removed the spark plugs here so we're going to thread it into the spark plug hole and then once it's threaded in here we will get the compression or the compressed air on it and then uh, power it up Can you hold that? Okay, so now that we got the air connected, uh, you heard it spin the engine over as we did that. Um, and now that that, that cylinder is down all the way, kind of unfortunately, um, you know, if you were to mess up during this process and have a valve drop, uh, there's not really any way to get it without pulling the heads. Um, but we're going to use this method and go through with our valve spring compressor. Uh, this is an LS specific valve spring compressor that works just for this. Um, this one I picked up off eBay for like $55 um, and it's been great. There's actually a replacement bolt here if this one goes bad. Um, so you just take your rocker off with the entire rocker girdle or shaft, sorry, and then uh, thread this in in place of the rocker arms. And they tell you not to use an impact on any of this stuff. Um, I just gently run run the bolts in with an impact. 
just to snug that up. And then from here, we'll use a ratchet by hand. Start cranking this down. And it popped off both of them where the retainers let go of the keepers. And we'll get this down here a little bit. We'll grab a magnet or just our fingers in this case because this one's pretty easy to get a hold of and I didn't grab the magnet in time to take this video. To get the keepers out of the way. And then Now we just simply unthread this. You see the springs coming up. Pass the valves. And as the springs loosen up, again, because this is now LS3, these are the actual blue, or sometimes you'll see them as yellow LS6 springs that everybody kind of likes to run on the low lift cam setups. So they're just not adequate enough for this. So now that that guy is off, I need to loosen this up more. These 660 lift springs have a, are a lot taller initially. And loosen that guy up. Take it right off, get it out of the way. Now our valve springs come right off. That'll leave us to the valve stem seals and we're gonna remove those next. So now for removing the valve stem seals, um, I just grabbed one of the pair of pliers down on the actual seal itself, give them a twist to break them free, and up and off they'll come. Um, we've got brand new ones as part of the kit to replace them with. We wiggle that down on there like so, and I use a rag to kind of soak up some of this oil that, you know, gets underneath the, uh, gets underneath the seal over time. Gently wiggle the new Viton seal down on there. And then I just simply take a, like a three-quarter inch socket. It seems to fit perfectly on there. And drive them down till they seat. Simple as that. So now that we have the uh, valve stem seals, which are also the spring uh, seats, in place, um, we can put the new springs on. Here's kind of a comparison between the old and the new. So that's an LS6 Beehive spring with a stock steel retainer next to the polished dual springs with the titanium retainers. And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, it, it seems silly to spend the extra money on the titanium and stuff, but I, I don't have a scale to measure the exact amount of grams the difference is between them. Um, but it is, it's a noticeable difference in your hand. <clears throat> and any bit of mass you can reduce in the valve train as it's spinning around it. You know, seven plus thousand RPMs is uh, definitely a good thing. You know, anything you can do to help reduce stress on components. So now we got the, <clears throat> we have the titanium retainers in place. Now we're gonna put our uh, valve spring compressor back in and repeat the process. So now we have our valve spring compressor down in place with the uh, stems centered in the retainers. We're gonna take our stock keepers and work those into place. And I might not actually have these down far enough. I might have to compress that a little deeper. I don't know if I can get that one on, but. There's that one, so I just don't have that one centered up good enough. I reach in here with a rubber handle from the pliers just so we don't mar anything up. Because the last thing we want to do is damage something. And try to center that a little better. There's that one. Okay, there's that one in place. So now we are going to take and loosen up our compressor and we'll see it 
tighten up on the keepers. Okay, now we're free. Now we go ahead and put this guy back on the impact, and then we're going to run these back off, take our compressor back off, and there we go. Um, while it's still under pressure, I like to give the valve stems a slight tap just to make sure that everything is seated correctly. Um, again, it's just a real light tap, but just to help confirm everything's seated appropriately. And that's it. Now we just repeat the process seven more times. Okay guys, now that we have all the valve springs and retainers and stuff installed, now we're going to get to work on the rocker arms. Um, for the next step, we're going to do the trending upgrade kit. And we're going to press out the original needle bearings. You can kind of see them down in there. Out of the stock rocker arms. Um, these are the same for all 16. Um, because it's an LS3, it has the offset rockers. Um, but what we're going to need to do this is your favorite cheap Chinese 12 ton press. Or I guess if you had a big enough voice, you could do this and that. Um, got a 15 16th socket here. Set that guy up. And set the lift or rocker arm in it, like so. And then we got a 14 millimeter or 9 sixteenths, whichever, you know, deep socket. And that'll all sit together here, nice and good like this. Okay, so now that we got it all set up in there, we're going to take our handle and put that guy in there and just start going slow. And eventually, it'll press all the guts out, right down into the deep socket, just like that. It kind of explodes and goes everywhere, but we're left with the bare rocker arm. And then these needle bearings, which I'll dump out and show you here. So these needle bearings, because they are cageless, in a sense, um, can actually escape under enough valve spring pressure and RPM and what will happen is is see these aren't sealed there's nothing that actually retains any of this together so if this started to walk out of the rocker arm under a lot of valve spring pressure and RPM and these needle bearings start to work their way down like that and come out uh, those are small enough they'll actually fit through the oil pump sump uh, the screens on the sump are not actually small enough to keep stuff like that from going through. So the best place to put this is right in the garbage. Every single bit of this will go right in the garbage. And then I'll just repeat the process for the other 15. Okay, so now that you've seen how to press everything apart, here is one that I just pressed back together with the new bearings and the trunnion shaft itself. Uh, so they give you these installation washers, and the whole purpose of them is it gives you they are the perfect thickness for the amount that the rocker trunnion shaft actually sticks out. So when you press these things together, you just set the bearing here, set your washer down on top with it centered in the, and the shaft centered in the washers, and push them together. So you end up with this. So now... We take a couple of our snap rings, which they give you two extra snap rings in this kit and two extra bearings. And we're going to put the snap rings on here, which helps retain this so none of these bearings can ever walk out the side of the rocker. Everything will be tied together, which is a good, safe way to do this. A lot more stability and for high RPM and high valve spring pressure situations. So now we got the all the rockers installed. So there's a good look of an LS3 head with the staggered rocker arms, as well as the Texas Speed polished dual valve spring kit and the titanium retainers. They're turning upgrade, the new six millimeter hardware that's in there. So that's all in. The plugs were all checked for gap. The uh, wires are going back on and the valve covers and Doing some small polishing up here with the radiator, and uh, well, we're not too far away from starting this thing. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have the valve cover covers on now. Uh, all plug wires are reattached. 
And we also have the saran wrap now off the gas tank with the computer installed. Um, I didn't really show too much of that, I probably should have. The computer is two 7 sixteenths nuts and bolts uh, holding it in. And then the <clears throat> connectors, you just simply push down here, it unlocks the connector. And then you have your locks that actually secure everything so it can't ever come undone accidentally. So the next step is now we have to get the radiator shroud in place. And that's done with the two thumb screws that use the special boss house tool as well as 7 16 nuts. Okay, now so our next step here, we're gonna reinstall the front wheel. Um, I've already got the caliper removed on one side. Um, again, you have to do at least just one side. That way you have enough room to get the wheel between the fork and the caliper. And then get this up in place here. So now we got the wheel back in, the axle tightened, as well as the pinch bolt that is in under there. So we'll get the caliper on next. And get this tightened back down. And then we'll work on the front fender. Okay, so now that we've got the tire on, fender's all reinstalled with our brackets. And if you guys remember from the first video, I put tape on here so I knew which height to put this on because the fork bracket or the fender brackets would slide up and down the forks to pretty much no extent. So go ahead and peel the tape off here. And we should be about ready to jack this thing up and set it down. There's the completion of the cam swap and an LS3 powered bus off. Uh, hopefully we can get a little bit more of a video put together for when it comes time to actually work on more of the tuning. Um, the video I just showed you is when we first fired the bike. Uh, the kind of first initial tune. Um, I've already found some things that needed to be changed from that since then. So we're going to go ahead and try to make some more changes to the tuning, um, but it's already running better than it was. So. Um, I think we're finding now that it's not enough torque converter for it. <clears throat> uh, the idle seems about happiest at 900 RPMs, which is about what I expected. Um, and the original idle was somewhere around 700. So hopefully a uh, converter change uh, to loosen up some of the stall speed to keep the bike from pushing so much during um, intersection or whenever you're stopped and on the brakes and uh, get it back to running how exactly how it should so thanks make sure to like and subscribe and comment below and we'll see you